Okay, for this particular video, we're going to focus now on linear regression analysis. So um, we can use whichever data set that we've got that's got the uh, sufficient amount of continuous data to use. Um, I've got this MPH data that rank quartile three data set um, that'll work just fine, um, which is pretty much the same thing as the big combined one, except it has the ranks um, that we created there. All right, where are we going to go to do linear regression? So under our task and utilities, um, we have underneath of task, there is an option for statistics. So we'll go into statistics. And then within statistics, we uh, can scroll down, see some linear models as an option, and we can, you know, do linear regression through analysis of variance. You can also just do traditional linear regression by clicking on it right there. Many of these will get you to a similar, similar place uh, in some respect. We'll use binary logistic regression in a future video. So. With linear regression analysis, we have to have obviously our Y variable or our dependent variable. So we can choose whatever that outcome variable may be. Uh, for this data set, I will choose the 1990 life expectancy variable. And we can have continuous variables as well as classification variables. Um, we've created some classification variables, so we might as well go ahead and and use them. I've got those uh, eight, I think, uh, eight uh, ranks for household income right there. So we can use them. Um, we don't have to, you know, but it's an option. Uh, and continuous variables, we can choose several continuous variables. I've got the uh, 1997 smoking estimate. We've got the, the um, that was the ever smokers. We've got the current smokers. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to pull from some of the 1997 type data that might be in there. Um, we've got the 1990 Gini coefficient, which is the measure of income inequality. And, uh, you know, that might be enough for our purposes here. I don't want FIPS. Let me get rid of that. Now, additional roles, if I click on that, if you had weighting and things like that, you'd need to do. Um, you might do that, but that's not necessary for our purposes here. Um, the model, um, if I try to do anything right now, it's saying add one or more effects to the candidate model on the model tab. So I have to go in there and click on model effects and then click on edit. And there are different types of models that are out there. There are nested models, there are factorial models. Um, we can just go with the simple, um, just single effects. So I'm just going to go with, I'm adding all of these. And even the rank household income variable, it knows that that's categorical from the previous thing. So I've added all of those into our single effects model. So they're there, I thought, but I have to hit OK. So I'm going to highlight them all, add and then at the bottom I have to hit OK. So now it started to populate our actual um, you know, code here. So we've got all this information. It's almost ready to go as is. But we'll look at some of the other options here. So we can have it display our diagnostic plots. If we want to display any um, kind of the outlier type stuff, we can do that, label extreme points scatter plots it's already got this one that's already in there but it's got pretty much all the ones that I'd be interested in already ready to go we can also tell it to manually um, do forward selection or backward or stepwise selection if we wanted to um, again I'm more of an investigator controlled selection person so I'd rather not do any selection methods you know I'd rather just not not turn those on. Output, we can send our output somewhere if we want to, um, but not necessarily uh, need it. We can create observation specific statistics, like we can save our residuals, we can save our predicted values if we wanted to. 
so that we could make, you know, our own diagnostics of those things. But it does such a good job on its own already based off of the initial model that we got that we should be able to go ahead and, and do it. So I had everything good to go. Let's see. It's telling me it wants me to select at least one statistic to include in the output data set, but I don't want an output data set, so I'm turning that off. All right, so we've got a lot of good tools here. We can go ahead and ready to run it. So I'm gonna hit the running guy, and when it runs, and it takes it a minute, So we're going to get our results here. So we've got a lot of stuff. We had number of observations read, 3,142. We had complete data for 3,105 of them. Um, we had a class variable with eight values. All right. And then uh, I must have clicked on the stepwise selection or something. I don't necessarily know. Um, we'll, we'll know for sure. We've got these fit criteria. All right, our model overall is a p-value that is less than 0 0.001, so it's a statistically significant model. It tells us more than if we had to just kind of guess on our own. The R-square is 0 0.5470. The adjusted is 0 0.5456, so that's helpful information. All the terms in the model that were presented here are statistically significant up until we, and, and these are income values are our, our modern household income values, not necessarily the income values from back then. Um, but you know, this may be informative. We see that income values of less of category four, three, two, one, and zero were all statistically significant with respect to their change in life expectancy, or with respect to their life expectancy overall compared to group seven. Group five and group six are not significantly different from group seven, the wealthiest. So the wealthiest is the out group or the reference group that these other income values are all compared against. So this p-value and this p-value say that it's not significantly different from number seven. But all these other ones are. In fact, um, if you're in the lowest income group in the 2017 income, their 1990 life expectancy was 1.79 years uh, less than this group. We see um, ever smoking. Um, People, the percentage that ever smoked in 1990 actually was associated with a slight increase in life expectancy, which you wouldn't expect, but that's the case here, at least just in statistical terms. The current smoking estimate is minus 0.20, so for every 1% uh, increase in current smoking, there was a 20 or a 0.20% decrease in or a 0 0.20 a decrease in years of life expectancy. The Gini coefficient was a significant uh, changer. So for every uh, one unit increase in the Gini coefficient, which it actually is, I think, at a decimal, it's on a decimal scale. So um, if you were to compare zero versus one, uh, the the life expectancy difference is 8.7 years. So, all right. So we've got all these other observations here that we can look at. Uh, we see the uh, predicted fits versus the life expectancy. So pretty good uh, line there. The um, fit diagnostics, you know, we're kind of looking at these residuals. We like for them to be not clumped. Um, Leverage is something that's different here. Where you may look for outliers on the leverage figures. 
Um, we see a little bit of outliers there on the lower end here that may be affecting our normal assumptions some. But our bell curve looks pretty good. When we look at our other residuals here um, by individual predictor, we don't want to see any clumping, or not clumping, but uh, any patterns. So sometimes, like uh, if we do the uh, violent homicide rate, I've seen a pattern on it before. So I can go ahead and, so overall that all looks pretty, pretty good on that end. If I were to uh, go back to our options here and go to model, data and just throw in there the uh, I think it's uh, the there's a uh, violent crime rate or something in here when we put that particular variable in at least when I've used it before um, and I run it sometimes we we get that uh, less than ideal shape for our residuals just so you can see what that might look like Well, here I went ahead and tried to add it, but you see that I have to go here and edit the model effects and add it. I have to add it there. Now I can run this. And when I run it, what do I get? So we're focusing here once it finishes running on the actual, I'm just showing you the residuals because that one particular one uh, on some models has presented itself as a, as a problem residual, but, and again, you see I've made this mistake on options, model, edit, I have to hit okay at the bottom Sorry for the delay there. These are problems that you may encounter yourself, you know, so you're seeing them in real time, near real time. So, okay, that's not too bad, but it's still pretty bad for, um, it's, uh, on our residual regressors for life expectancy. We'd expect the zero and ones to be like that, but the la there's some shape going on there that we may not like. All right, so that's just a little bit about how to do linear regression analysis. So we're gonna look at how to look at multicollinearity in the next video. It's pretty simple. Save your code here, don't get rid of it, because we're gonna come back and use that here in the next video.